Thanks for tuning in. It is winter and for me that means I'll be making stews. Join me as I'll be making s'more jawa, a delicious Indonesian beef stew from the island with the same name. Hi, I'm Tuan and welcome to my kitchen. If you're new to this channel, I focus on cooking foods from my home country, the Netherlands, and some of its former colonies, such as Indonesia. I love today's stew. It is such a savory dish, but the ketchup manas that we'll be adding adds just a hint of sweetness. I was actually introduced to this stew by my friend Ed, who made it for me one day, and I have been in love with it ever since. To make s'more, you will need two onions, one large potato, I'm using russet, one large tomato, a chili pepper. I am using a Fresno chili pepper because I don't want this dish to be too spicy, but whatever pepper you'd pick here, that is what sets the spice level of your dish. A piece of galangal, a clove of garlic, some nutmeg, 500 grams of stew meat. I'm using chuck, 200 milliliters of water, six tablespoons of ketchup manas, a teaspoon of distilled white vinegar and salt and pepper to taste. I'm going to start by preparing the vegetables. For the onions, we're going to cut it into half circles. So first I remove both ends. Cut it in half. Remove the skin. Make sure that you have all the tough layers out. Sometimes there isn't necessarily a papery layer anymore, but one of the outer layers still is a little bit tougher than I'd like. So make sure you cut that off. And now we're going to cut that into approximately a centimeter, uh, half an inch thick slices. <laughs> and then put them in a bowl as if nothing happened. <laughs> See here, this layer isn't necessarily paper, but I can tell that it's too tough. So I'm taking it off. And half inch slices. Okay. <laughs> the chili pepper, we're just going to cut in rings. If you want to, you can deseed them. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Most of the seeds fell out. I'm not going to put them in, but whatever is stuck to them, I'm leaving in here because this is not a hot chili. For the garlic, I like to use a microplane to grate it. You can also use a garlic press or just mince it really finely. Be careful of your fingers. And if you don't want your fingers to smell like garlic, just use a little spatula <laughs> to scrape it off the bottom of the microplane. I'm now going to cut the meat into smaller pieces. I want squares of approximately two centimeters by two centimeters, three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. Doesn't always work, but just try to get as closely as possible. I bought the meat already cut in large chunks from the butcher. But if you just get a piece of chuck, you'll have to do a little bit more work than I am. Even though my friend Ed introduced me to s'more when I was in college, I had it again when I was in the Navy. And now I make it every winter. There are many different varieties of s'more in Indonesian cuisine. What we're making is s'more Java. And Java is the Indonesian word for Java, which is where this dish originated. I need to brown the meat. So I have two tablespoons of grapeseed oil heating up in my pot. You really want to make sure that all the sides get browned and so resist the urge to just start moving it around. Let it sit on one side and then flip it over. It's okay if you have to do this in two batches. I don't want to overcrowd it so I will be doing this in two batches also. I'm going to start flipping them over. I'm going to remove this first batch. Okay, let's brown the second batch. Now that the second batch is done browning, we're going to add the first batch back in. As well as all of the onions. And we're going to cook these for three minutes while stirring. 
Another beef stew I've made before is rendang. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. And that has a lot of spices and herbs in it. This one is a lot simpler to make. And I actually think that both of those complement each other. Oftentimes at a rijstafel, you will have s'more as well as rendang. We're just gonna grate some fresh nutmeg on here. Don't do too much, it's a very strong flavor. And you just want a hint of it. So just like that. Now we are adding the chilies, the garlic, and the galangal, which I've cut just a one centimeter, half an inch thick slice of. The ketchup. Make sure that you get it all. The vinegar and the water. Now I'm gonna stir it all to combine. You can smell that ketchup. Oh, it smells so good. As well as the garlic. I'm going to put the lid on here and when I can hear it boiling I'm gonna turn the heat down too low and let it simmer for two hours. Before we use the tomato we have to de-seed it. So I'm going to cut it in half. And then again in half. And scrape out the seeds. The last quarter. Okay. And now we're going to cut this into a dice. I'm cutting them to be about an inch by an inch or two and a half by two and a half centimeters. It's been stewing for a little over two hours. For the last 15 minutes, I removed the lid because there was a little bit more liquid than I like. This is just the right amount. And now I'm going to add the tomatoes and increase the heat and keep stirring this and cook this for five minutes. It smells so good in the kitchen right now. The onions, the beef, and the ketchup smells all come together. The tomatoes will soften as you cook them and will add an additional flavor to the stew. It's been five minutes, so I'm gonna move this pot over to my simmer burner to keep it warm while we prepare the potato. That smells so good. I've peeled my potato and now I'm going to cut it into thin slices about a centimeter or a um, little less than half an inch. This is a pretty good sized potato, so I'm actually going to cut each of the slices into quarters. If your potato is smaller, you don't have to do that. Now we're gonna to go to the stove to fry them up. I've got two tablespoons of grapeseed oil heating up in my nonstick skillet. Once the oil is hot, we're gonna add our potatoes. Let me take a little piece of potato to test if the oil is hot enough. Okay, it's sizzling, so that's good. And we're just going to add as many potatoes as will fit, laying flat, and we're gonna cook them for five minutes on each side. Be careful adding these potatoes to the hot oil. You can use a pair of tongs or a fork if you want to. And these potatoes are thin enough, you don't really have to worry about crowding your pan. So just put as many in as you can fit. It's been five minutes, so I'm gonna turn them over now. Oh, look at that color. That is fantastic. There has to be a quicker way to do this, <laughs> but I certainly don't know it. Now that I've flipped them all, we're gonna let them cook for another five minutes. These have been cooking for a total of 10 minutes, so I'm going to remove them from the pan. If you're not sure if they are fully cooked, just grab the thickest piece of potato that you have and either um, try it to see if it's fully cooked or put a toothpick in it and make sure that the insides are nice and soft. Actually, I can do this easier, right? like that. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit more grapeseed oil and just quickly heat that up. And now I'm going to add the rest of the potatoes. 
and I'm going to repeat the same process for the second batch. All the potatoes are cooked and I'm now going to stir them through the stew and just continue heating them for just a minute. Everything is heated through, so it's time to serve. Before I serve it, I always give it a quick taste to make sure it doesn't need any additional seasoning. For me, it doesn't. But when you do this at home and you think it needs some salt or pepper, please add it, stir it through and you're ready to go. Just gonna put some in a bowl. And I'm gonna taste it all together. It's makkelijk. It is so delicious. The beef melts in your mouth. The potato adds just a little bit of crunch to it and that familiar potato flavor. The sweetness of the ketchup. And then there is this warmth from the Fresno pepper. Not spicy, but you can tell it's there. Absolutely fantastic. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button and don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have any questions about this recipe, please leave them in the comments below. I'll post the written recipe on my website, twanskitchen.com, and you can follow me on social media. If you make this dish, please take a photo and share it on Instagram with the hashtag twanskitchen, and I will feature it in my story and on my website. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.